Dear Pauline, Greetings, dear sister. Is there a way you could come to the rescue of Ruth Nakalima as she is really struggling with food? Ruth is 29 years old and has four daughters and is pregnant with her fifth. Her husband abandoned her and later died from AIDS. Ruth is HIV positive now and desperately needs vitamins, food, soap, and sugar. She went to the hospital and found out the baby in her womb is dying. She lives in a small rented room and is struggling to survive. Meet Dave Stam. Dave lives in Kentucky and he loves making violins. This is his workshop and this is how he makes his violins. Yesterday was a banner day in the fiddle shop. I got two packages. It's just like Christmas in May. First of all, I sent away for some sound, some good wood for the top of my violins. And I re received some really nice spruce. So I'm really happy that my soundboard or my belly, the top of the fiddle, will, will, uh, will look and sound a lot better. And uh, I'm really excited because uh, I've been making my tops out of two by fours. I cut down. The spruce in there is good, but it's not tone wood quality. And this is really nice stuff. And, uh, and on that subject, I have a mentor and a friend in Maine who I've been talking to back and forth on the wonders of the internet. And he offered to send me some maple that he cut down 15 years ago. And he makes his violins out of this maple. And trust me, he's a master class fiddle maker. And to get wood from him is quite an honor. And uh, so I can't screw up this fiddle. And I got that package yesterday, too. And that's the one I was really waiting for. And the wood he sent me is, is marvelous. I mean, you cannot... This is great stuff. And uh, I can't wait to get started. And actually, I did get started a little bit. I made a template for... Uh, I'm trying something new. I'm going to go with a an inside, or it's really an outside frame to build the ribs. And that's the way Dan, who lives in Maine, does his. And uh, I thought I'd give it a try, so I made a template. And I think it's gonna work out. Back in the shop again. Uh, I've been pretty lucky on how this violin's been going together. I have the back glued to my frame here, and uh, that seems to be taking real well. Um, <clears throat> I've finished with the purfling. That's it basically uh, inlay wood, 
little thin strip all around the edge. I cut my F holes out. I just installed my base bar, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm carving it down. The base bar is a very important part of a violin. Not only does it support the top, but it also has to have enough flexibility that the top still moves when you play it. And uh, there's basically certain numbers you got to hit, and I'm doing that right now. And it, it, it works pretty easy. It's just, I just scrape it off. I got a nice sharp plane. And I measure where I want it to be, and it works real well. So I won't be attaching this top to the ribs probably tomorrow, and then I'll cut in for the neck, and uh, this violin will be just about finished. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Dear Pauline, thank you so much for the funds for Ruth. I was able to deliver Ruth the food for her and her daughters just in time for Christmas. They love the Christmas cake. Thank you so, so much for helping her. Hi. It's been a little while since I've been posting anything about the violins and thought some of you might want to know where I stand with some of them. This one here is number 13. Uh, it's already got a home and uh, I'm kind of proud of that. My, my aunt, who is a Notre Dame nun, Sister Janet, uh, asked me if I'd donate one of my violins to the Ugandan mission where she taught for 20 years. So this one's going to Africa. So some little African kid will be playing one of my stand violins and who knows. I never thought that would happen. But uh, this one's coming along really well. I, I pretty much have the back carved. It's, this maple was really hard and it's not finished yet, but it has lines going through it that once it's varnished and that will really stand out. It'll look really pretty. And uh, I still have to do the purfling and the back isn't carved out or graduated or anything. And uh, the edges aren't done. But it's coming along. But it was so hard to carve, my hand was cramping so bad, I thought I needed to switch to the top. That's what I'm working on now. And it's spruce. And uh, it's European spruce. And it just... It, it, it carves so easy, it's, it's like butter, and I'm really enjoying this, and it's, it's been a real pleasure doing this. Then my next, I'm carving them, I'll carve two at a time, because they're the hardest part for me. I screw them up regularly and have to start over, and, and eventually they turn out. The ribs are still on the form, but they're... They're looking good. I got to pop the form and and trim a lot and put the linings in, but uh, they came together real nice. And they also have enough. This is that same maple came out of the same wood, and uh, it has real nice figuring in it. It's kind of like a tiger stripe. It looks really good. And that's basically where I stand with these violins now. And it's violin finishing month for me and I have just about finished with violin number 13 and I think it's coming along really nice I'm holding the camera by hand this time and I don't know how well that it is doing but as you can see the uh, violins looking pretty good and that's number 13 
I haven't reamed the peg holes yet, and I haven't uh, reamed the the button on the bottom, but uh, it's getting there. A couple more coats of clear, and I'll be finished. I just finished shaping my fingerboard, and I'll be attaching that in a few days after the varnish is dry, and I'll put the sound post in and string it up, and we'll see how she sounds. That's about where we stand in the shop today. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, moving the camera around messed your mind up too much, but uh, it's a first for me holding the camera. And I think I'm going to mount it next time. Thanks. Bye. Well, there it is. It's finished. Dear Pauline, we have all of the clothes ready for you to take to Uganda. By the way, my nephew, Dave Stam, makes violins, and he would like to find a home for one of his violins in Uganda. Would you also be able to take a violin to Uganda? Dear Sister Janet, of course, I would love to take it. When I have been in Uganda, I would only see and hear just a few instruments, and there was not a violin in sight. My problem is, who could I find to play the violin in Uganda? Dear Sister Janet, I have my dad's violin and it is all broken up. Does Dave repair violins? Dear Pauline, Dave told me that he will give it a try. Dear Pauline, Ruth has been discharged from hospital yesterday. Her life was saved, but the baby died in her womb. My husband and I drove to Covington, Kentucky to visit the Sisters of Notre Dame. When we were there, we picked up the clothes that they had made for the children in Uganda. We also finally met Dave Stam and he gave us the violin that he so lovingly built. We admired the violin's beauty, the woodwork, and the sound. He was thrilled knowing one of his violins was going to Uganda. I assured him I would find a home for his violin in Uganda. I then showed Dave my dad's broken violin. He told me, he was not sure he could fix it, but as he looked over it carefully, he said he would give it a try. Dear Pauline, I cleaned your dad's violin, making sure I did not remove the original varnish. I took the violin apart and repaired the op block and top and bottom bouts I then glued everything back together again. I had to install a new bridge and tuning pegs. I also replaced the tailpiece, but I saved all of the original parts for you to keep for sentimental value. Your dad's violin case was in pretty bad shape, so I also repaired the case too. It looks real nice. Dear Dave and Sister Janet, We'll drive to Covington, Kentucky to pick up my dad's violin on September 19th. The photos that Dave sent of my dad's violin are just beautiful. I would like to pay Dave for fixing it. Dear Pauline, Dave does this for the love of learning the technique and experience of creating beautiful violins. 
A thank you note is all he wants. Or you could donate from your nonprofit that you and your husband have that cares for the African children. Dear Pauline, Ruth's health turns for the worse. She now has full-blown AIDS. Ruth tells me she is dying. Ruth is so weak, she cannot even get out of the bed. She wants me to look after her daughters and asks me to take the three youngest girls to my island so they can attend school. Dear Pauline, I will bring the girls to see their mom for the last time. Rachel is the eldest daughter and is 14 years old. She is the one caring for her mother. Ruth has fought a good fight. She is now a ghost and cannot even stand on her feet without support. Dear Pauline, Ruth is in a room without a window. A small girl lying beside Ruth is Carol, who is greatly missing her mother. Poverty here is beyond poverty. It is a mud house with three tiny rooms and hardly any space to sit. The youngest Carol did not seem to understand that Mummy was going through her last days. All she wanted to do is see her mom. We are now in Covington, Kentucky once again to pick up my dad's beautifully restored violin. I showed him the photos of Ruth and her children. I said that I would like to donate $250 in his honor to help Ruth's daughters so that Victoria can buy them some clothing, beds, and bed supplies. Dave said to me he never thought that one of his violins could have such an impact on children in need. He said, when Sister Janet asked me to make a violin for a child in Uganda, I jumped at the chance thinking that it would be exciting to have one of my instruments so far from Kentucky. Little did I know that it would facilitate a meeting with you and your father's violin, which would result in you helping children in my name. Dear Pauline, I am now breaking the bad news to Ruth's daughters. This is the hardest thing to do. Rachel, the eldest, was with her mom when she died. I am so grateful I could reassure Ruth that I would honor her dying wish to care for her daughters. I still need extra funds to pay for Ruth's burial. Her family is so poor that no one has any money to bury her. Dear Victoria, we will send the burial funds along with the donation we made in honor of Dave Stam who fixed my dad's violin. That should cover all of the costs. Dear Dave, the donation our nonprofit made in your honor for fixing my dad's violin is now being used to provide a proper burial for Ruth. It also is going to provide for her daughters. Victoria says, thank you, Dave. Dear Pauline, 
I bought the girls suitable clothes to say goodbye to their mom. I also made sure Ruth had a proper coffin, a dignified funeral, and provided a beautiful funeral service for Ruth and for her family members. I am now her new mom. Dear Pauline, I bought two double-decker beds for the daughters along with some bedding. All of the girls are now attending Ebenezer School on Nasazi Island. My husband, Lou, and I finally were able to travel to Uganda in November. First on my list was to bring Dave's violin, as he lovingly refers it to as violin number 13. I carefully carried it with me and checked it in as carry-on. I made sure it was safely stowed in the overhead area, often checking to make sure it was not crushed with other suitcases. We successfully made it to our first stop in Atlanta, Georgia. While there, I opened it up to make sure all was okay. Then we boarded the flight for the long eight-hour journey to Amsterdam. Then we continued on for another 10 hours to our final destination, Uganda, violin number 13's new home. When we arrived in Uganda, we first went to the Entebbe, Uganda shopping mall. And to my surprise, there was a Santa Claus with a violin. I guess at least someone in Uganda is playing one. On December 2nd, we drove a long four hours to Busisa, Uganda to deliver violin number 13 to its new home. The Sisters of Notre Dame have developed a beautiful school there for the girls. I knew that this was the best home for Dave's violin number 13. We followed the signs to the school. We finally arrived. The school is on beautiful grounds and was lovingly built by the Sisters of Notre Dame. I was so excited to know the violin had traveled safely over 10,000 miles. We entered St. Julie's Convent and we all waited, including the violin, with patience and anticipation. We met Sister Colette and Sister Immaculate. They were thrilled to receive this violin that Dave Stam built with love. I knew Dave Stam would be so happy to know that his violin would bring happiness to a Ugandan student. I finally knew violin number 13 had a home in Uganda. Thank you so very much. Pauline and Lou, Sister Janet, David Stam, all who made this beautiful violin possible to bring music and culture. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts for this beautiful instrument. Thank you. On December 3rd, I climbed into a boat to travel on Lake Victoria to visit Nasazi Island. This is where Victoria has a small community and school for over 50 children who are all either orphaned or have been abandoned. This is where Ruth's daughters now live. It's a beautiful and lush island. The land is fertile, produces healthy fruits and vegetables. It even has a cow that produces fresh milk. It's a good place for the children to live grow and learn. The children receive an excellent education at the island school called Ebenezer School. I was able to meet Ruth's children there and visit them in their classrooms. I then walked to their dormitories where they sleep. I was able to finally see the double-decker beds that were bought with the money that was given in honor of Dave for fixing my dad's violin. The girls wanted to say thank you to Dave for giving them a 
chance. My name is My name is Nakawesa Broy. My name is Nam Sokerich. My name is Kanawakara. Hi, Uncle Dave. Thank you. So, this is the end of the tale of two violins. But it's also the beginning of a new story of how two violins from America can indeed make a difference. Thank you.